Tracking Tropical Storm Nicole as it takes aim at Florida's east coast. The storm could reach hurricane strength when it makes landfall later this week. Broward County is under a hurricane watch and a tropical storm watch is in place for Miami-Dade. Your Weather Authority team has complete coverage. Hurricane specialist and storm surge expert Michael Laurie is standing by and we begin with our chief certified meteorologist Betty Davis. And it is just four miles per hour shy of officially being classified as a hurricane. As of that 10 o'clock advisory tonight, winds of 70 miles per hour moving toward the west southwest of 10 miles per hour. It will continue to work closer to the Northwest Bahamas. It's about 300 miles east of West Palm Beach, Florida at this point. So along the way, it becomes a hurricane moving over or near the Northwest Bahamas tomorrow, approaching the east coast of Florida come Wednesday night and early Thursday headed for a landfall. I do want to show you the watches and warnings that are up along the eastern areas of Florida, including uh, some of our areas, our viewing area, and what you're seeing are hurricane warnings extending from uh, the immediate east coast of Palm Beach County northward along the Treasure Coast, and then that's a hurricane watch in effect for Broward County. So we're looking for a landfall along the east coast of Florida somewhere around that coast of West Palm Beach or Palm Beach County northward along the Treasure Coast late Wednesday night into early Thursday. Hurricane watch, as I mentioned, for Broward, a tropical storm warning for Broward County, and also a tropical storm watch for Miami-Dade. So we could have winds gusting to 40 miles per hour starting tomorrow in parts of Broward, and we're expecting those winds gust to 40 plus miles per hour for uh, Broward tomorrow. Uh, we could have that for Dade, and we're expecting that for Broward. That's uh, what I how I should have said it. So this is a look at a forecast model and just how it shows the system as a hurricane closing in on the east coast of Florida come tomorrow night. There we are at 10 p.m. And you'll notice some uh, heavy rain bands around the core of this, and we would expect the gustier, the stronger winds closer to the core of it as well. So uh, no surprise that that hurricane watch is continuing for Broward because we could very well have winds that gust well over 40 miles per hour, just depending on the exact tract of the core. So anyways, just getting you ready for tomorrow. Broward County, be ready for winds gusting 40 plus miles per hour. Starting as soon as tomorrow morning, we could be feeling tropical storm force wind gust. We'll have the rain bands coming in, the rough surf, coastal flooding. And then for Miami Day, the winds could gust up to 40 miles per hour as well, too. So Wednesday into a part of Thursday, the weather is going to be kind of rough around here. And with that, let's bring in our hurricane specialist and storm surge expert Michael Lowry to talk more about this system, which is almost a hurricane. It is, Betty. Yeah, you and I earlier this afternoon were looking at it and it had improved in terms of its organization. It was a healthier system. Then it sort of plateaued a little bit in terms of the strengthening rate the, uh, tonight. And if you look at it right now, it looks like it may be trying to get a little better organized. I'm going to talk about what happened here and what the hurricane hunters were finding. You can look, though, on their map and find Great Abaco Island here. This is the Bahamas. Here we are in Florida, about 300 miles away. You found, find the center of this system. You can see the convection or the thunderstorms near the circulation center beginning to bubble up again tonight. Most of the time with these tropical systems, they kind of hit their stride during the overnight hours. So kind of curious to see if that happens with this one, though we're not expecting a rapid rate of strengthening, just sort of a gradual strengthening. As Betty said, only five miles per hour away, four miles per hour technically, but we only go by five mile per hour increments from being a hurricane, being Hurricane Nicole. And by the way, if this does make landfall in Florida as its forecast, it would only be, it would be the first time since 2005 that Florida has had two hurricane landfalls in the same season. Pretty remarkable. When you look at the water vapor picture though right now, we have dry air on the south side of this that's kind of worked its way into the core. And if anything, that's kind of stimmied the organization of this. It's not allowed it to quickly strengthen. Even the waters are very cool here. The upper level is just not all that conducive to this one kicking off very quickly like we've seen with some hurricanes as of late. The big story though with this one is the extensive uh, wind field on this. It's not a subtropical uh, storm anymore. It is a purely tropical storm, but it does kind of have the characteristics of a subtropical system being a very broad wind field. Look at some of these wind reports from buoys off Sure, 51 mile per hour gusts, 50 mile per hour gusts up here. This is three, 400 miles away from where the center of this is. 
So a very big circulation, even though that core is trying to establish itself, it's still really the breadth of the wind field. You can see that uh, on our uh, wind timing graphic here, the yellow is the kind of kidney-shaped area of the tropical storm force winds. That orange area is where the stronger tropical storm conditions are. You can see that's pretty contained to where the center of the circulation is. It's going to move through the Bahamas uh, during the afternoon hours tomorrow, be approaching us. As Betty said, we expect those tropical storm winds, especially in gusts in Broward and Miami-Dade counties during the day tomorrow. Tomorrow, and then it should come ashore sometime late tomorrow, probably during the overnight hours on Thursday to our north. You can see that little bitty uh, expanse of hurricane conditions, hurricane force winds there near Fort Pierce, and then this one moving inland into central Florida for uh, the day on Thursday. This could be a big rainmaker, by the way, for parts of uh, central and uh, northern Florida that are still kind of drying out from Ian uh, last month. Look at the potential storm surge here. This is the water rise from the very strong, uh, persistent winds that we are seeing, two to four feet uh, just for parts of northern Broward County and Palm Beach County, one to two feet down here. But this is going to be coming with wave action on top of it. So you think you kind of bring the water levels up and then you have large waves that are crashing on top of that. So that's why we have a coastal flood advisory for Miami-Dade County. And then that storm surge warning all the way up the coast here. The good news, though, is that as the winds sort of turn around on Thursday, we're going to be drying out and at least the coastal conditions are going to be slowly slowly improving through the end of the week. But got to get through tomorrow. Tomorrow is kind of the big day, especially the high tide that will be coming in around 9 a.m. here in South Florida. We're going to watch for that coastal flooding.